Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Today is 11th of January and I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. So guys, in this particular session, we are going to cover entire Hindu newspaper along with the background as well as way forward. Also in this particular session, we are going to cover the MCQ questions based on the current affairs along with the mapping locations that are in the news. And I would like to tell you that to take maximum benefit of this particular session, please download the synoptic notes of this session which are available on telegram group. Now in these particular notes, we have simplified all the articles that have come there and in exams oriented way, we have covered all these particular articles. For example, for example, all the important information, necessary information that is needed have been covered in these particular synoptic notes. So please download it. Now moving on, first of all guys, we are going to cover First of all guys, we are going to cover the overview so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper. Okay. Now, so here we have a Delhi edition of Hindu. Now, first article that we have is Shinde's faction is real Sena speaker. Now, we'll take this particular article for exam point of view. We'll understand what this entire issue is all about because recently Supreme Court has given a judgment also in this particular direction. We'll understand it. Then here, India seen as a pillar of stability, says Prime Minister. So basically, guys, we see this particular thing that recently, Prime Minister has inaugurated the 10th edition of Vibrant Gujarat Summit. Now, this Vibrant Gujarat Summit is a platform where Gujarat invites investors so that they come and the different, different investment opportunities in Gujarat they can explore. So here, Prime Minister had said that when we talk about India, India happens to be enriching democracy. India happens to be the hub of innovations, hub of technology. Also because of the youth demographic dividend that India has, India is a rich player of stability. Then moving on after that uh, we have these political articles, not important advertisements etc are there. After that guys coming to city section we largely have regional issues here okay which are not that much important for examination and if you are following some different edition of Hindu okay so articles here in the regional section this is in the past one week or so we have seen this entire crisis multiple number of times I think at least five six times we have discussed this entire issue that how now Maldives India relation declined because of the recent election that has happened in Maldives after which President Mohammed Muzu has come to the power. He is becoming more pro-China. Because of that particular thing, he has taken multiple steps such as asking India to withdraw their troops that are present in Maldives, discontinuing hydrographic surveys with India. Because of these particular steps that have been taken by Maldives President, relations have declined. Then Indian Prime Minister visited Lakshwadeep, then it was also criticized by ministers in Maldives. Because of that, the relations are declining. So, article simply talks about this particular thing. Article simply talks about that these decline that is going on should be avoided. In fact, Maldives needs India more. Because Maldives' entire economy is dependent on tourism and Indian tourists, they contribute a biggest chunk of tourists that are going on. And yesterday, if you remember, we have seen in data also that 2023, largest number of tourists that visited Maldives were number one, Russia, and number two, India. Okay, so this is something that should be focused upon. Then after that, uh, next article that we have, an expanding Gaza war with no end game in sight. So this article talks about that Gaza war that is going on. Israel has no intention to bring a peace. Now I've read this entire article but article actually does not contain much of a substance and second thing I will advise you that it is not needed for you to read day to day commentary in Israel, Gaza, in uh, Russia, Ukraine war etc going on because as this war is going on a lot of things here are going to change. Okay, then a colonized, a colonial discourse on the wheel. Now, this particular article, what this article is talking about. So, you might already be knowing that the hijab issue was going on in Karnataka, where earlier government in Karnataka, they ordered that in educational institution, hijab could be regulated. 
now new government has been formed in karnataka congress government they recently said that we will take back the order to ban wearing hijab in schools then they said that okay we are considering it second day said that we are considering it now the article is saying that in india uh, basically in india there are the suspension of hijab that was carried in karnataka by the bjp government then it said that in the west also this is happening okay all such things are provided article guys does not contains the academic substance relevant for the examination if you have interest you can read it but for exam point of view substance is missing here then moving on and uh, let's go to the next article state of play article rupinder sikh koner's victory has infused congress with some energy okay moving on in this particular direction okay uh, boeing's best seller 737 max hits an air pocket again so 737 max is a series of it is an aircraft which is specifically manufactured by boeing and this aircraft has come under global scrutiny because of multiple accidents and mishaps that happened on this particular accident so basically guys what happened so recently in uh, in in the alaska air in the alaska airways in usa the window pane of this boeing 7377 aircraft came out when it was in air similarly in one of an indian airline also it has been found that one part was missing in this 737 max and around the world many such kind of incidents with this 737 max has happened so basically guys now what is happening so basically all the airlines which are using these 737 max now they are investigating that whether there are some serious problems in this aircraft fine then moving on text and context page law around remission policy will take this particular article for examination it has come because recently supreme court has set aside conviction uh, set aside the um, release of the 11 convicts in bilkis bano case we'll take this article don't worry then why did north india fog heavily in last weeks of 2023 we'll take this particular article also then further moving on a framework of paradox the promise and problem of being bangladesh so this article is a bibliography article where they take premise from few books and discuss that okay then further moving in this direction we have uh, after a record 1111 ngos got fcra nod 30 get clearance in january so fcra what fcra is fcra stands for foreign contribution regulation act and under fcra license is needed if an organization such as ngo wants to receive funding from the foreign fcra rules were notified in 2020 and after that getting the foreign funding was made a little bit difficult and ngos if they want to receive fcra they have to get the regular renewal okay then further moving on uk to send advanced naval group for training we'll take this particular article for examination then guys uh, further we have the political articles etc here okay under new deal each state can field table once in three year so recently there is this controversy that came in news what happened punjab government alleged that deliberately center government has not allowed punjab's table on republic day parade they said that because punjab government is being ruled by aap punjab is being is being governed by aap deliberately center is discriminating against them now you need to understand one particular thing that when we talk about republic day parade approximately 15 tableaus are portrayed every year and if 15 tableaus are portrayed it means obviously all states and union territories they will not get a chance to portray their tableau every year so here what has happened what has happened defense ministry has provided that now we are going to uh, display tableaus on the basis of rotation okay every year 15 tableaus are depicted so once in a three year every state or ut will get a chance to depict its tableau okay so this is something that they have come but i will not advise you to go too much in detail in this particular thing then we have this article supreme court report exposes severe gaps in accessibility for disabled people across courts in india we'll see this particular report for examination then further moving on armed uavs in the hand of non-state actors pose a challenge so guys we see this particular thing that many of the terrorist groups non-state actors are using the unmanned aerial vehicles for a lot of notorious things for example they are using them for transporting drugs for delivering weapons also for carrying the attacks now these unmanned armed vehicles are being used which is a very big challenge okay 
Now, moving on. Okay, one more thing, guys. I just want to tell you that if you remember, just two days back, we have discussed that the counter drone, anti drone, counter drone technology has been developed by DRDO, which it will give to the private sector. What is the counter drone technology? So, basically, suppose an enemy drone is coming or a terrorist drone is coming to neutralize that drone. Fine, we will be using our own drone. Okay, so such counter drones have been developed by DRDO. Okay, so just an addition. Now, Moving on, we have the world page and guys on the world page, uh, Blinken meets Abbas lays out vision for post-war Gaza. Now, one thing guys that I want to tell you here is see this thing that on world page, first of all, world page is important for our IR GS paper number two, but every meeting between the leaders, every statement given by the leader is not important. Those articles are important, which either contains some new initiative where India part is a part or if it is talking about India's foreign policy or if initiative which will impact Indian interest overseas. Such things are the ones which are important for UPSC examination. So you need to understand this particular thing while following. Fine. Then moving on, uh, gunmen subdued after the television, after they storm a television studio in Ecuador. Okay. Then here we have one article, ILO warns of rise in unemployment, decline in real wage. We'll take this particular article for examination. Then further moving on, further moving on guys, uh, fine. Here we have the corporate trends etc. Then we have sports page and in last, let's see if we have some good article in science page also because some days really good articles come. For example, yesterday there was an article that how sisal leaves can be used to make sanitary napkins. Now today article that we have, okay. So basically guys, this article, it is talking about us paper that has been published in the journal Science by Dr. Fuji. Okay, Dr. Fuji who is an astronomer from Japan and he has discovered an intense cosmic ray. Fine. So, about that it is discussing. Now guys, the article as I have read it, I have read this entire article but understand this particular thing that you are not really required to go too much in detail in the research papers that are being published in the journals because all these particular things right now are peer reviewed. Right now they are under the peer review. So for examination, no need to go too much in that because even you cannot trace all the scientific papers that are being done because uh, thousands and millions of such things are right now going on. And even in UPS examination, such such things for um, the papers of theoretical physics etc they are not asked okay fine or astronomy etc are not asked so that is about it and uh, now let's discuss all these relevant articles one by one in detail i hope guys that you have got the idea and meanwhile guys if you are liking the video please do hit the like button now after this first i am going to take the solution of MCQ questions that I gave you in previous session. So guys, those who are new, every class we take the MCQ questions which are based on current affairs. One question from PYQ also we take. These questions, why we take? Because if you have this thing in your mind that a question might be asked from the today's current affair, you will be more careful while reading it. So questions are asked from the previous day's current affair. So today we will ask the questions from yesterday. Okay, tomorrow we will ask the question from today's current affair. Okay, and also I want you that please, please, this is a request from my side that if you want to take the maximum advantage of the session, have this habit that every day you will attempt the question and will leave your right answer in the comment box. Fine, because it is a way of revising the current affairs. Okay, now moving on and uh, let's take first of all, the answers for the yesterday's question. So first question that we asked yesterday is consider the following statement with respect to the India-EU relations. So there have been so many articles on India-EU relation that have come in news. The European Union is India's second largest trading partner after the US. European Union is India's second largest export market. Okay, trading partner is different, export market is different. Okay, when we talk about the trading partner, both import export will come. And the third is India is European Union's third largest export market. So basically statement one is correct. Okay, European Union is India's second largest export market. It is correct. A large number of India's exports, particularly the textiles, textiles, agricultural products, they go to Europe. Okay, European Union. Then European Union is India's second largest export market. Yes, this is also correct. 
इंडिया इज यूरोपियन यूनियन थर्ड लार्जेस्ट एक्सपोर्ट मार्केट नो नो ओके इंडिया इज यूरोपियन यूनियन टेंथ लार्जेस्ट एक्सपोर्ट मार्केट नॉट द थर्ड लार्जेस्ट ओके सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट सॉरी रॉन्ग दिस थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग सो वट इज द राइट आंसर राइट आंसर इज वन एंड टू ए वन एंड टू ए ओके देन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वी टूक ये इज मूल्य प्रवाह टू पॉइंट टू गाइडलाइंस आर लिंक्ड टू सो रिसेंटली वी हैव सीन दैट मूल्य प्रवाह गाइडलाइंस आर लॉन्च बाय यूजीसी एंड देर वाज वन फुल आर्टिकल दैट वी हैव सीन हियर सो दीज गाइडलाइंस आर रिलेटेड टू एजुकेशन सेक्टर स्पेसिफिकली दे ट्राई टू इनकलकेट वैल्यूज वैल्यूज इन एजुकेशन सेक्टर ओके मूविंग ऑन मूविंग ऑन देन वी हैव टेकन दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो ये दिस इज अ प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन ओके सो द लेंथ ऑफ इट्स डे and the tilt of its axis are almost identical to those of the earth this is a true of for which planet it is true so right option is mars now when we talk about mars okay one day in mars is equal to one day and 37 minutes of earth one day and 37 minutes of earth so the day is very similar and the tilt is also very much similar to the earth so the right option is mars and mars orbiter mission mangalyaan all these developments have happened lately okay fine so this is the yesterday's answer now let's take the mcq questions for today so first question for today consider the following statement air quality index measures eight contaminants including lead and cobalt by 2024 national clean air program hopes to cut average pm concentration by 80% so consider the uh, consider the options and please guys Please, guys, leave uh, the uh, mark this particular answer and leave your uh, answer in the comment box. Leave your answer in the comment box. Then, second question: Which of the following statements about International Court of Justice is correct? A. The court is permanently in session in Geneva. The questions before it are decided by a majority of judges present. The judges are elected for a six-year term. Retiring judges are not eligible for re-election. Which of the statement is correct? Okay, and then. the third question which of the following pair is incorrect abul fazal this is a previous year question abul fazal chief advisor pezi poet birbal finance minister all are correct all are correct okay which of the following pair is incorrect okay now so these are the questions for today please attempt it and in the yes tomorrow's class first we are going to see their right answers now let's start with the session for today okay now guys every class we start with a gs quotation so today we are going to take the quotation from leo tolstoy leo tolstoy says that wrong does not ceases to be wrong because the majority shares in it often what we do we we derive the ethicality from what majority in the society is doing it if majority of the people are doing x we say x is right if minority is doing y we say y is wrong because very less people are doing it but understand that ethicality morality lies in rationality lies in rationality sometimes an entire society might be doing but entire society might be corrupted might be corrupted so therefore ethics simply does not means doing what majority is doing so wrong does not ceases to be wrong because the majority shares in it wrong will still be unacceptable you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 4 ethics integrity and aptitude okay ethics integrity and aptitude now moving on moving on and uh, the mapping location that we are going to take today mapping location that we are going to take today is Norway's parliament approves deep sea mineral exploration ignites environmental debate okay so guys recently what has happened norway's parliament has approved this deep sea mineral exploration so because of this particular thing norway becomes an important mapping location and might be asked in your examination in prelims 2024 first of all guys when we talk about norway we need to understand the location of norway first we need to understand the location of the norway first so first of all the capital of norway is oslo and who are the neighbors we have sweden finland so we have sweden as the neighbor we have finland as the neighbor we have finland as the neighbor and also russia is a neighbor of norway if you see on the map russia it might see it might look that russia is not making a border but guys 
if i little bit zoom here if i little bit zoom here fine so you will find you will find that murmansk murmansk province of russia it makes a border with norway with the norway so again let's see that who are neighbors of norway so neighbors of norway we have sweden we have finland we have russia which are making the land boundary with norway after that guys after that guys if we further analyze the water bodies around norway you see this particular thing that on the extreme north we have arctic ocean on the extreme north we have arctic ocean towards the northeast we have barents sea northeast we have barents sea then towards the northwest we have norwegian sea norwegian sea and in the south we have north sea in the south we have north sea okay here we have atlantic ocean okay so these are important water bodies around the norway okay now let's understand this particular issue where they have allowed the mining where they have allowed the mining so basically guys let's analyze let's please focus on this particular map okay so basically here we have norway here we have norway here we have norwegian sea and this particular red region this particular red region that you find here this is the proposed deep sea mining area proposed deep sea mining area now first of all the problem that comes here is that this area does not comes under the exclusive economic zone of norway exclusive economic zone of norway now if guys you focus here norwegian economic exclusive zone it is in this purple color so this one i am highlighting this one is actually the norway's exclusive economic zone and within the exclusive economic zone a country has a power that they can go for the mineral exploration they have more rights but what norway is doing norway is carrying this sea exploration beyond its eez so this is one concern that has come second concern that has come here that around this particular mining site there are many important marine protected areas ecologically sensitive ecologically vulnerable areas that are there now first of all we have here the jan mine island jan mine island just here you can see now it has been declared as the mpa that is the marine protected area marine protected area then here if we see we have the swalbard which also has been declared as the marine protected area so ecological damage on the swalbard jan mine and on the ocean as a whole will be happening because of that it becomes environmentally controversial because of it which it becomes environmentally controversial so therefore the protests are happening so please keep in mind the water bodies that are there jane mine island if it comes that was recently in the news fine so where it is located it is located uh, between the greenland sea and norwegian sea okay then further moving on guys when we talk about the deep sea mining deep sea mining there are many countries which are moving towards the deep sea mining there are many countries which are moving in deep sea mining now when a country is doing a deep sea mining it might be doing for polymetallic nodules okay it might be doing for oil it might be doing for gas okay and when we talk about around the world the countries which are going for land sea mining and the area in which they are doing land sea mining that has increased substantially and if we see as of latest china it has okay fine now the land area granted for deep sea mining exploration worldwide number 1 we have china number 2 we have we have uk korea russia okay so fine so this is about it okay also guys also guys norway was also recently in news because norway has vast phosphate deposits fast phosphate deposits and these phosphate deposits are very important for uh, the they are very important for the yeah, lithium uh, phosphate now see uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries fine they use a lot of phosphate and for the ev cars it is going to be very important so this is also reason that norway was in news so please keep all these particular things in your mind and uh, i hope that you have got the idea okay also guys also guys uh, here i have provided you a brief summary about the important aspects related to norway when we talk about the norway it is a situated where it is situated in the scandinavian 
Peninsula, Scandinavian Peninsula and Norway. It has over 50,000 small teeny tiny islands around it and the shape of it has an elongated shape and one of the longest and the most rocky coasts of the world they are found in Norway and many important region uh, fine so most common minerals that are discovered here are iron ore copper zinc nickel gold okay fine so this is about it fine also also what is deep sea mining the practice of extracting mineral reserves from the deep sea bed okay it is called as the deep sea mining deep sea mining fine so when we talk about deep sea mining in the territorial waters in the territorial waters every nation has to do the mining and commonly for oil it is done okay but when we talk about the international waters it is governed through the united nation backed international seabed authority international seabed authority for example international seabed authority it has given approval to india also to mine the polymetallic nodules from indian ocean from indian ocean so this is guys all about it and i have provided all this information in the synoptic notes that have been given to you on the telegram channel so this is about it and now let's move and let's discuss the first article first article okay so we have this article here Shinde's faction is real Sena speaker. Shinde's faction is real Sena speaker. We'll take this particular article with respect to GS paper number two, polity and related issues. Polity and related issues. Now, guys, understand this particular thing that before going in this particular article, you need to have some basic background information. And only if you have this background information about the Maharashtra political crisis, you will be able to understand it. You will be able to understand it. And guys, one more thing that uh, the response on the MCQ questions have not been good. Okay, because only Fazil has answered the questions. Okay, so I want you that please, if you want that we continue it, please participate in answering. Now, let's understand this particular thing with the background. Okay, now, if we talk about Maharashtra, so here you can see that Maharashtra has 288 seats in their legislative assembly, in their legislative assembly. And if any party wants to form the government, they need to get minimum 145 seats. They need to get minimum 145 seats. Now, in 2019, elections were conducted in Maharashtra. And as elections were conducted in Maharashtra, let's see that which political party got how many seats. Now, uh, you need not to remember the absolute number, but to make sense of this controversy, you need to know these particular things. So, in 2009 election, if we focus here, we find that BJP got 105 seats, Shiv Sena got 56 seats, NCP got 54 seats and likewise. So technically, if we see, BJP had got the highest number of seats in 2019 elections. But it still does not have the majority because to form the government, they, have, they need to get 145 seats at least. So they were 40 seats short. So what happened actually Shiv Sena, Shiv Sena which actually had just 56 seats, it made the coalition with other political parties and it actually formed its government. So what happened? Coalition, coalition government MVA, Maharashtra Vikas Aghadi was created. Maharashtra Vikas Aghadi, a coalition government was formed. In this particular coalition government, there was Shiv Sena, Nationalist Congress Party, NCP, Indian National Congress and many other parties were there. And in total, in total, they got 170 MLAs and it then they formed the government. Now guys, understand this particular thing that Shiv Sena at that point of a time was led by Mr. Uddhav Thakre. Now because of this particular coalition that they have made, particularly the coalition that they have made with the National Congress, Nationalist Congress Party, NCP and Indian National Congress. So, coalition that they have made with NCP and INC, some of the factions, some of the people, some of the MLAs in Shiv Sena, they got frustrated, they got irritated. They said that ideologically, BJP was more close to the Shiv Sena. And if, and if some coalition was to be made, then the coalition should have been made with BJP, not with these parties. So, therefore, what happened? Eknath Shinde, Eknath Shinde particularly got irritated because of this particular step that was taken. And therefore, what happened? Eknath Shinde, 
along with some other loyalist MLAs, they rebelled against the Shiv Sena. And Eknath Shinde, Eknath Shinde, he said that he had a support of 47 MLAs. They, he said that he had a support of 47 MLAs and they rebelled against the Shiv Sena. Okay, and they said that we are going to support the BJP party. And with the BJP, we will now form the government. We will now form the government. So within Shiv Sena, division has happened. Now guys, understand this particular thing. Understand this particular thing. So, so within the Shiv Sena, fine, division happened in 2022. Now what happened? What happened? So the two parts became of Shiv Sena. One part is led by Mr. Uddhav Thakre and one is the part in which Eknath Shinde is there. In which the Eknath Shinde is there. Now guys, what happened? What happened? Basically, Eknath Shinde, he asked the governor, okay, or basically they asked the governor that please ask the Uddhav Thakre to prove its majority in the house, to prove its majority in the house. Uddhav Thakre will not be able to prove its majority in the house because 47 plus MLAs have already left. 47 plus MLAs have already left. If you see here, if you see here, how many MLAs they had? 170. And if 47 MLAs have been left, obviously he will be not be able to prove its majority. So Eknath Shinde led government, uh, led faction as the governor that okay, ask them to prove their majority in the house. Now, when all these particular thing was happening, when all this particular thing was happening, VIP, when all this particular thing was happening, VIP issued the order to these MLAs that you don't rebel against the political party. Now, what happened? Eknath Shinde group, they also established their own VIP. They established their own VIP. Okay. Now, understand what interesting thing is emerging here. Actually, within Shiv Sena party, there are two whips. One whip which is there, which belongs to the Uddhav Thakre faction. And other whip is there, which belongs to the Eknath Shinde faction. So basically, guys, what happened? Now, both the whips are issuing a different kind of order. Okay. And ultimately, what happened? Uddhav Thakre resigned. Uddhav Thakre resigned without facing the trust vote. And as Uddhav Thakre resigned, governor invited Eknath Shinde to prove his majority in the house. Eknath Shinde with the support of BJP proved the majority. Now, if you just do the basic maths, BJP already had 105 seats. Uh, Eknath Shinde had the support of 47 plus MLAs. Minimum number that was needed was 145. So they very easily formed the government and Eknath Shinde came to the power in Maharashtra. Now this entire matter reached to Supreme Court. This entire matter reached to the Supreme Court. Now, let's say what judgment was given by Supreme Court. Let's say what judgment was given by the Supreme Court. So, basically, okay, one more thing, guys. I have provided this detail here. You can see that. You can see that. Okay. Fine. Now, so question arose that whose whip is binding? Whose whip is binding? Whether the whip of legislative party that is the ruling party, that whip is binding or whether the whip of, okay, if you guys see this particular thing, 56 seats are there in Shiv Sena, 47 MLAs have rebelled. So, means that the legislative power of the Shiv Sena has been stripped. So, whose whip will be binding? Shiv's uh, Eknath section whip is binding or the Uddhav Thakare section whip is binding. So, this question came, okay. Now, guys, understand this particular thing. First of all, what the court ruled? What the court ruled? Court ruled this particular thing that to hold that it is the legislature party which appoints the whip would be to severe the figurative umbilical cord which connects a member of the house to the political party. To the political party. Now, Shiv Sena, it became, it emerged as a political party. The one which has fielded the candidate, one which have all the system established. MLAs, they were called as the legislative party. So, within the Shiv Sena, Political party is the original Shiv Sena that is there. And the legislative party is the MLAs which are right now sitting in the house. So, Supreme Court provided that you cannot say that these MLAs, whatever whip they will appoint, that will be the real whip. Real whip is the whip of the political party. Real whip is the whip of the political party. Means, 
उद्धव ठाकरे विप इज द रियल विप इज द रियल विप एंड दे हैव आस्ड दीज एम एल एज नॉट टू रिबेल ओके दे हैव डिफाइड द विप्स ऑर्डर दे हैव डिफाइड द विप्स ऑर्डर ओके दिस इज समथिंग दैट हैज हैपेंड वन मैटर डिस्कस बाय द सुप्रीम कोर्ट नाउ ऑल्सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेट दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग ऑल्सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेट दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट resignation uh, also uh, they said this particular thing that the governor was not justified in calling upon mr thakre to prove his majority so if you remember governor called uddhav thakre to prove the majority supreme court said that that is not correct why because governor did not had any objective material before him on whose basis he called him it was said that just uh, on the basis of subjective assessment he called him so therefore governor was not right in calling uddhav thakre for the trust vote but court also said that they cannot reinstate uddhav thakre as chief minister why they cannot reinstate uddhav thakre because he resigned if he would have faced the trust vote and even if he would have failed then there might be a possibility that we can revive him reinstate him but now it is not possible because you resigned very important lesson in life you learn from here that often what we do we give away we give up our weapons without even fighting so that should never be done if he would have fought he might have got reinstated but now it is not possible okay then then a question comes here that see if the whips order is denied can these mlas be disqualified from the house on the basis of anti defection law can they be done that thing so supreme court said that yes there is a possibility that these rebel mlas they defied the whip original whip was Uh, the uh, the the earlier shift sena they defied their whip they can be expelled if they want who will remove them who will disqualify them so the disqualification will be done by speaker disqualification will be done by speaker and supreme court gave the time to the speaker in maharashtra assembly that you decide that these rebel mlas they have defied the whip at that time are they to be disqualified or not so first speaker delayed this particular thing for a very long period of time and now guys what has happened speaker in the maharashtra assembly has given the decision has given the decision and this decision is very interesting let's understand this particular decision that has been given so speaker speaker says this particular thing that shiv sena got divided in two parts that is the uddhav thakre section and eknath shinde section supreme court said supreme court said that the political parties whip will prevail that the political parties whip will prevail and now speaker had said that actually the eknath shinde section is the real shiv sena is the real shiv sena it is the political party it is the real political party the whip that was issued the whip that was issued by the uddhav thakre will not stand their whip will stand and here they have not recommended the uh, so their whip will stand so by this particular logic no disqualification will happen by this particular logic no disqualification will happen now because of this particular factor what happened mlas in the maharashtra shiv sena party and many other political parties they had got frustrated and now they say that it is the murder of the democracy okay so this is something that has happened here so supreme court said that the political parties whip will prevail here they have said that the eknath shinde section is the political party that is the real shiv sena okay so guys here you can see that the real politic is being portrayed at its best okay now the ball is in the court of people that what people have to now the people have to understand and people have to give their now final verdict in the upcoming elections in this particular direction as what they think that whether the speaker's decision is correct or whether the whether the speaker's decision is correct or whether it is not correct now it is on the people to assess this particular thing however the uh, uddhav thakre led section they have said that we will again approach the supreme court we will again approach the supreme court so that is about it now moving on to the next article moving on to the next article the manifesto for justice that has sprung from crisis a manifesto for justice that has sprung from crisis now this particular article guys now this particular article so what has happened in this particular article article is talking about that actually a lot of crises are right now prevailing in india 
lot of crises are right now prevailing in India. Now, when we talk about the crises that are prevailing, first of all, we see that recently there was an, a desperate attempt by unemployed people to draw attention by gate crashing the parliament. So, unemployment and economic challenges going on. After that, we have seen that what happened, there was the town of Joshimut that was sinking and it was in the news in 2022 and 2023. It is an environmental ecological damage that is going on. Then there is the dam burst that happened in Sikkim. There was the glacial lake outburst flood that happened in Sikkim. We have seen it is again a disaster, an environmental disaster that has happened. Then conflict is going on in Manipur, which is a social, social disaster that is going on. After that, there is attempt to stifle the democratic voices by slapping false case against the activist, journalist, lawyers who are speaking against the unjust laws or the institutions, they are getting silenced. So multiple crises are right now going on ecological, cultural, political, social in the country. Now, article further provides this particular thing that in this particular direction, people's movement, civil societies, they become very important. They will raise the violence against ecological, social, cultural, political damage that is going on. And in this particular capacity, what happened? There was a civil society, the movement of 85 people, Okay, or 85 people civil society, they released a people's manifesto for a just, equitable and sustainable India. So, a new manifesto has been released again. This manifesto is called as People's Manifesto for a Just, Equitable and Sustainable India. It is released by 85 people movement, 85 civil societies. Okay, now they have come together under the platform Vikalp Sangam, Vikalp Sangar which means alternative confluences, alternative confluences. Now, this Vikalp Sangam, in the past few years, they have taken up many initiatives for sustainability, social justice, etc. Okay, social justice, etc. Fine, they represent hundreds of initiatives working on ecological food production, water harvesting, community-based energy production, housing, fine, meaningful education. So, all these social justice themes they take up. Now, this particular manifesto, this particular manifesto has proposed that a lot of important factors are needed to be considered and particularly political parties who are going on in election in 2024, they should consider these things in their election manifesto. So what they have suggested, what they have suggested, number one, number one, they have suggested this particular thing, they have suggested this particular thing that the crisis of unemployment needs to be taken seriously crisis of unemployment is to be taken seriously attention is to be taken to small manufacturing small manufacturing crafts industry why because this particular industry can employ large number of people manufacturing industry cottage industry the focus can be need to give here okay fisheries pastoralism also immediately now see job creation will take some time it will not happen immediately but in order to tame the immediate job crisis we need to extend the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act to the urban areas. As of now, MG Narega, it is available only in rural areas. It provides 100 days of job guarantee, but it is to be extended in urban area. Recently, Rajasthan government has come out with this scheme for the Rajasthan state, but pan-India basis extension to urban area is needed. Okay, then moving on, then moving on to the next also, Vikalp Sangam, they have also showcased a lot of success stories that how at the rural level revival has happened, how by the by focusing on rural development, village-based development, out migration has been reduced, or even the count reverse migration from cities to town cities to villages is also happening. Okay. Now, this particular manifesto further also talks about that there is a need of real devolution of financial and legal powers to the villages and the urban assemblies. There should be the proper implementation of the 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. Now, 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act truly empowered the ULBs and Panchayati Raj institutions. Truly empowered the ULBs and Panchayati Raj institutions. And in a way, they have also made the provision to give them sufficient financial power. But that has not happened till now. Also, it seeks to reserve 6% of GDP equivalent for education. Now, what happened originally, Kothari Commission, 
ओरिजिनली द कोठारी कमीशन रिकमेंडेड दैट सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ इंडिया जी डी पी इक्वेलेंट शुड भी गिवन फॉर एजुकेशन सो दे हैव सजेस्टेड दैट ऑल्सो इन द एजुकेशन दे हैव सजेस्टेड द यूजेज ऑफ मदर टंग एक्टिविटी बेस्ड लर्निंग कल्चरली इंडिया इकोलॉजिकली रूटेड लर्निंग वे आर द एनवायरमेंटल साइंसेज कल्चर कल्चर नीड्स टू बी टॉट फ्रॉम द अर्ली लेवल्स ओके ऑल्सो दिस पर्टिकुलर दिस पर्टिकुलर मैनिफेस्टो they have also advised that special attention needs to be given to na land water okay or ecology special and focus is to be given because now we find this particular thing that the soil toxicity is increasing carbon emissions are going up pollution is a big problem still persist in this capacity if you remember yesterday we have seen a report on the trends of pollution also okay so they have also suggested that there is a need of a national environment commissioner a national environment commissioner which will be created as a dedicated constitutional body to look on environment so as we have dedicated body for elections election commissioner of india as we have a dedicated body cag comptroller auditor general in the same way we need to have the national environment commissioner for the environment okay so these are suggestions that have been given here these are the suggestions that have been given here now moving on the laws around remission policy the laws around remission policy okay now we are going to guys see this particular article in the context of gs paper number 2 social justice as well as articles issues related to polity social justice and polity now before going in this particular article i would like to tell you some basic background information and once you understand that we will go in this particular articles detail let's understand this so basically guys what happened so during 2002 during 2002 gujarat riots 2002 gujarat riots a woman by the name of bilkis bano was raped a woman by the name bilkis bano was raped and her family was killed her family was killed in front of her okay in this particular matter 11 men were 11 men they were convicted 11 men were convicted now this particular matter was taken up by cbi and in order to ensure that this case is dealt in neutral impartisan manner what happened this case was transferred to maharashtra this case was transferred to maharashtra and a court in maharashtra ordered that these 11 men will be given the life imprisonment will be given the life imprisonment and even bombay high court has upheld life imprisonment of these 11 men so they were serving the life imprisonment now what happened what happened in 2022 in 2022 one of the person he approached supreme court he approached supreme court and asked for the remission of his term as for the remission of his term he said this particular thing that we have served more than 15 years in jail we have served more than 15 years in jail and we should be given remission and what happened finally finally gujarat government finally gujarat government gave the remission to these 11 men they were released from the jail and what happened because of that there was lot of backlash that started on social media people said that how this thing can be done a woman who was raped at that point of a time she was even pregnant her family was killed and these 11 men they have been just released from the jail this is injustice and what happened again the matter was put forward to the supreme court that whether the step of releasing them which has actually been taken by the gujarat government is it right also center government has approved the releasing of this 11 men so matter reached to supreme court okay now guys what happened what happened matter reached to supreme court now just two days back supreme court has given the ruling in this particular regard supreme court has given the ruling in this particular regard and in this particular ruling supreme court very clearly provided this particular thing that these 11 men they don't deserve any mercy they don't deserve any compassion fine it has been provided by the bench led by justice bv nagaratna and it was provided that these people have to report back to the jail they have to report back to the prison okay so their release has been set aside 
Now, we are going to discuss in detail, fine, though we discussed it earlier also, we are going to discuss in detail that what are the rules with respect to the remission. Now, first of all, guys, when we talk about the remission, pardoning, fine, re remission, pardoning, etc., under Article 72, President has been given the power to do that and under Article 161, Governor is also given the power to do that. But states also, state also have the power, state also have the power that they can remit the sentences. And this particular power is given to the state government under the Section 432 of the Code of Criminal Procedure CRPC. But at the same time, Section 433A of CRPC provides this thing that remission in the case of, it provided that remission in the case of life imprisonment can only be given when a person has already spent 14 years in jail. So in the case of life imprisonment, before 14 years, remission cannot be given. Before 14 years, remission cannot be given. Also guys, Supreme Court has provided this particular thing that Remission cannot be exercised in an arbitrary manner. In the Lakshman Naskar versus Union of India case, Supreme Court has led the five grounds that are to be considered before deciding the remission is to be given or not. Now, what are these five grounds that have been suggested? So, these five grounds suggested here are, number one, whether the offence is an individual offence or a crime against society, whether there is a chance of the crime being repeated in future, whether the convict has lost the potentiality to commit the crime, for example, a person is too old, cannot commit a crime now. Whether any purpose is being served in keeping the convict in prison. Socioeconomic condition of the convict's family. These five grounds are to be taken. Now, in Bilkis Bano case, it was seen that actually the act that was done with the Bilkis Bano, it was seen that it actually is a crime against the entire section of the society. Okay. Also, it is being said that socio-economic condition of the convict's family uh, uh, sorry second it is being said this particular thing that the purpose is being served what a deterrence is being created that such things will not be tolerated okay so this is something grounds that have been given which are to be considered for the remission now guys understand this particular thing i told you that one of a convict moved to the supreme court in 2022 and actually this convict requested the supreme court that supreme court please give the order to gujarat government to give me remission on the basis of Gujarat's 1992 remission policy. Okay, what was the Supreme Court role here in 2022? This convict asked the Supreme Court that you please instruct the Gujarat government to give remission on the basis of 1992 remission policy. Now, when we talk about the remission policy of 1992, it was, it came in existence in 1992. Crime was committed in 2002, that time this remission policy was in place. Also, the conviction of these people happened in 2008. At that point of a time also, this remission policy was in place. But guys, understand this particular thing. That, understand this particular thing. In this particular policy, as per this policy, you can challenge your conviction or you can challenge your sentence on the ground that the life imprisonment has been given on arbitrary basis. Life imprisonment has been given on arbitrary basis. Moreover, guys, understand this particular thing. Supreme Court in Sangeet versus State of Haryana case has clearly held this particular thing that any convict serving a life imprisonment does not have a right to be prematurely released just because he has completed 14 years. So just because you have completed 14 years, you don't get a right that I deserve to be prematurely released. On case by case basis, it is to be seen. Okay. On wholesome manner, the remission cannot be given. Now, understand this particular thing, guys. This 1992 Gujarat policy, 1992 Gujarat policy was revised in 2014. Why? Why? Because in 1992 policy, there was no ground that under this ground, we will not give remission. It was a very open-ended policy. In 2014, it was provided that, see, there needs to be certain grounds on whose, if, there are certain grounds on whose basis, for example, certain crimes should be mentioned. If they have been committed, there is no remission. So, in 2014, what happened? It was provided that remission will not be given to the people who have been convicted of rape and murder. Also, one more ground is there that remission will not be given if the case was investigated by an agency under the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. Now, I told you that the case was 
इन्वेस्टिगेटेड बाई सी बी आई सो एज पर टू थाउजेंड फोर पॉलिसी विच इज राइट नाउ गोइंग ऑन रेमिशन कैन नॉट बी गिवन टू देम ओके ऑल्सो गाइज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑल्सो गाइज अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैव ऑल्सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑल्सो देर इज वन मोर इशू दैट कम्स हेयर एंड द इशू इज दिस दैट हु हैज द पावर टू डिसाइड द रेमिशन नाउ द क्राइम वॉज कमिटेड इन गुजरात एंड द सेंटेंस वॉज गिवन बाय द महाराष्ट्र तो हु हैज द पावर टू डिसाइड दिस रेमिशन गुजरात और महाराष्ट्र सो नाउ द लेटेस्ट राउंड ऑफ जजमेंट दैट सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज गिवन सुप्रीम कोर्ट प्रोवाइडेड फ्यू थिंग्स नंबर वन सुप्रीम कोर्ट प्रोवाइडेड दैट रेमिशन इज नॉट टू बी डिसाइडेड बाय गुजरात बट इट इज टू बी डिसाइडेड बाय महाराष्ट्र ओके देन सेकेंडली दे सेड दैट एक्चुअली द कॉन्विक्ट वेन दे मूव टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड दे आज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट टू अलाउ देम टू गेट द रेमिशन बाय गुजरात दैट ऑर्डर दैट ऑर्डर वॉज दैट ऑर्डर वॉज 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 अटेंड वॉज ऑप्टेंड थ्रू फ्रॉड एंड सप्रेशन ऑफ द फैक्ट्स through the fraud and suppression of facts so therefore now supreme court had said that these people need to again go back to the jail and need to serve their term and this particular things happens to be an important judgment which has again restored the faith in judiciary so that is all guys about this entire issue i hope that you have understood it and now moving to next article why did north india fog heavily in last weeks of 2023 now this article guys we are going to see with respect to prelims examination geography with respect to geography prelims examination we will see this article and also guys we will see this particular article with respect to the gs paper number 1 geographical phenomena gs paper number 1 geographical phenomena okay now guys first of all this is not something unique to this particular year we find this particular thing that every year as the winter starts in north india around delhi haryana rajasthan just a minute so we see this particular thing that every year as the winter start in north india Har around haryana punjab delhi up fog starts and every year you will hear these news that so many vehicles collided with each other because the visibility due to fog got restricted now the uh, final days of 2023 and 2024 there was huge foggy conditions that were there and it impacted haryana chandigarh uttarakhand up bihar and visibility reduced to less than 200 meter and in some cases visibility reduced to less than 50 meters also guys it impacted the many air airways many flights were impacted many trains were impacted because of this poor visibility now the visibility is caused because of the fog so in this particular article we are going to understand that what actually the fog is all about what actually the fog is all about so basically guys when we talk about the fog in the most simple terms in the most simple terms what is the fog fog is simply the collection of small droplets of water which are produced when evaporated water has cooled and got condensed near the ground has got cooled and condensed near the ground also when we talk about the fog fog can be dis fog can be defined as a thick cloud very close to the surface of earth a very thick cloud close to the surface of earth now what are the conditions that are needed to be there in order to form the fog so first condition that is there the temperature should be lower temperature should be lower which are found in the month of the north in the month of the november december and also there should be the abundant moisture that is available around the surface so if moisture and if uh, if abundant moisture and if temperatures they go down the fog will be formed now guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about the fog when we talk about the fog so basically how the fog is formed how the fog is formed understand this particular thing that actually there are the two important ways there are the two important ways one is the formation of fog through infrared cooling formation of fog through infrared cooling now understand this particular thing when we are transitioning from summer to winter when we are transitioning from summer to winter what happens the ground is absorbing a lot of sunlight lot of heat and because of that the ground is already little bit having the higher temperature 
But what happens as we are moving towards the winter during the night time or during the evening time what happens the temperature starts to drop. Temperature they starts to drop and therefore the air here it becomes a little bit cooled. Now when this particular cool air comes in the contact with the ground comes in the contact with the ground okay. What happens? What happens when the cooler weather kicks in this mass of warm ma moist air it comes in contact with the processes that cool it and because of this particular cooling the water vapor that are there they start to condense and because of this condensation there is a thick cloud which is formed and this particular cloud impacts the visibility which is called as fog which is called as fog then the next is the radiation fog next is the radiation fog now what is radiation fog now this radiation fog occurs when there is an unreasonable warm day fine unreasonable warm day high humidity is there and then the temperature drops rapidly then the temperature drops rapidly okay so it will again create the fog so basically guys if you see north india we find this particular thing that already a lot of aerosols are there which are suspended in the environment there is no scarcity of aerosols in the north india at least then what is happening moisture is there and sudden condensation happens due to that this cloud is formed near the ground okay Fine. Moving on. UK to send advanced naval group for training with Indian forces. So basically guys this article we are going to see with respect to the GS paper number 2. India UK defense relations. India UK defense relation. Now first of all guys Mr. Rajnath Singh defense minister of India is on a visit to UK. And this particular visit is very important because the visit of an Indian defense minister to UK comes after two decades after 20 years and in this particular visit many important and high profile agreements memorandum of understanding and exchanges have been held number one in order to help India's Navy UK will send the littoral response group to the Indian Ocean region this particular year and the next year career strike group will visit in visit India and both of India and UK they are going to conduct they are going to operate they are going to train in the Indian Ocean region so littoral response group of UK and career strike group these happens to be two most elite components of the British Navy so they are going to train with the India also both of these particular countries they have discussed that they need to enhance the future cooperation in the defense sector Okay, now understand this particular thing. Already guys, with USA, we have deep defense ties, but now we have signed the ICET, ICET agreement with the USA, in which USA will provide critical technologies to India, particularly in the defense sector. Already guys, USA is providing India with respect to the jet technology, um, high altitude, long endurance UAVs, they are also being provided by USA to India. Now UK also wants to provide the knowledge transfer to India. They want to provide technologies to India. They provide, they aim to provide the expertise to India. So therefore, along with the cooperation in defense military exercises, oh sorry, defense exercise that is happening, there is a need that knowledge sharing should also be there. And why this is important? Because guys already, India UK 2030 map has been released in 2021 so as per this these cooperations are getting increased also guys also guys both the countries now this particular line you will find common both the countries it will be in the context of India US India UK or any democratic country we always have this line that both countries they are committed for protecting the critical trade routes and they are committed to uphold the international rule based order from whom they are protecting the international rule based order from the hegemon countries such as china so this is the reason that they are collaborating in the defense also the uh, the india and uk they have signed the agreement to enhance the logistics exchange logistics exchange for example if indian ships are going towards the europe then the uk will provide support and the similarly if uk ships are coming to India for patrolling purpose or something like that then India will provide them the logistics support fuel supplies etc then allowing for the logistics exchange logistics support supply services between UK and Indian armed forces joint training joint exercise also authorized port visits cooperation during the disaster 
disaster relief humanitarian cooperation humanitarian assistance cooperation will be enhanced between the two countries so this particular thing guys shows a kind of a convergence between india and uk that has emerged on defense ties and it also shows the increasing might of india in the indian ocean region india in the indian ocean region also both india and uk they have signed an mou for the international credit exchange program and letter of arrangement on defense collaboration okay now understand this particular thing you need not to remember all these particular points one by one but you need to focus on themes number one increased cooperation in the navy exercises number two technology exchange number three logistics exchange and logistics support okay now moving on to the next article supreme court report exposes severe gaps in accessibility for disabled person across courts in india now this particular article guys we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 issues related to judiciary now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about the disabled people when we talk about the disabled people already india had signed the united nation convention on rights of person with disability United Nation Convention on Right of Person with Disability we have signed also guys we have signed the Incheon strategy we have signed the Incheon strategy we have signed Bivaco Bivaco Millennium Framework Bivaco Millennium Framework and all these particular things they provide that India has to ensure an accessible and inclusive society accessible and inclusive society which does not discriminates with the disabled people which pro which provides all the accessibility to the disabled people and guys in order to fulfill this we also have come with the right of person with disabilities act right of person with disabilities act 2016 2016 and under this right of person with disabilities act 2016 it has been provided that india has to ensure the accessibility of all public buildings accessibility of all public buildings also also there is a sugamya bharat abhiyan there is a sugamya bharat abhiyan or accessible india campaign that have been started by india accessible india campaign sugamya bharat abhiyan to enhance the accessibility of disabled people in public buildings fine but still what we find that disabled people still what we find that disabled people court rooms are not accessible to them and in this capacity what has happened recently center for research and planning center for research and planning of the supreme court they have released a report they have released a report and they provide this particular thing that half of the district court complexes find more than 50% of district court complexes they do not have the ramps so that disabled people cannot access only 25.2% have wheelchairs only 5.1% of the district court complexes they have tactile paving to assist the visually disabled people now guys understand this thing one concept i want to tell what is first of all if a person is having any anomaly physical anomaly a person not having limbs a person having some uh, some uh, a person having a disability in eyes that is impairment that is impairment because of impairment a person is not able to do certain things that is disability but sometimes socially these people are discriminated socially these people are not included that becomes a handicap that becomes a handicap so here these people because they are disabled they cannot access the court room because wheelchair is not there ramp is not there for visually disabled people the tactile paving is not there so this has created certain injustices handicaps for these disabled people also this report puts a light on the inadequacies in the district court okay they provide this particular thing that that accessible toilets is very important but only 30.4% of the court complexes have separate disabled friendly toilets fine in this capacity some good case studies are there which can be uh, recommended for example the supreme court already in the september allowed a lawyer with hearing disabilities to argue with the help of sign language interpreter delhi high court engaged the services of a sign language interpreter to enable the petitioner to understand the proceedings main number of times proceedings court proceedings are going on the people 
who have hearing disability are not able to hear okay so sign interpreters will be provided but these sign interpreters are only available in 2.8 percent of the districts in india so there is a severe deficiency there is a severe deficiency with respect to the uh, infrastructure support for disabled people and in general also infrastructural deficiency is there so if you see total sanction strength of judges is 25081 but how many courtrooms are there in india just 20831 okay so 4250 courtrooms are less in india and this also becomes a very big reason that cases judiciary becomes very much delayed more than 4 crore cases are pending in india and infrastructural gap happens to be one of a big reason then moving on here we have this particular article uh, ILO warns of rise in unemployment decline in real wages so this article we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 3 prelims report section because often a question on the reports is asked so article talks about ILO is a recent latest report that they have released that is the world employment and social outlook trends 2024 report the world employment and social outlook trend 2024 report now first of all um, being a UPSC aspirant you will not find anything um, enlightening or anything revolutionary here in this report what you know already just the same thing they have provided but why we need to read it because if you're writing an answer on economy and you are even writing any fact but if you substantiate it with some fact some data some report it gets more credibility in the eyes of examiner so therefore using them is important now uh, the ILO has provided this particular thing that macroeconomic environment has degraded. Russia-Ukraine war is going on. Inflation is going on in US and Europe. Gaza war has been started. Because of that, they say that because of this particular thing, there are the aggressive moves that have been made by the central banks of developed countries. What they have done, they have increased the interest rate. For example, the US Federal Reserve, they hiked the interest rates. Because of that particular thing, what has happened? investments that might have come to the developing country now they have moved to developed country because their interest rate have increased also cheap capital that was coming that is also not coming so therefore it has impacting the developing countries it has impacted the developing countries also it has provided that economic slowdown has come but good thing is that global growth in 2023 is modestly higher than 2022 it is modestly higher than 2022 okay and global unemployment rate was a 5.1 percent which is improved but still large number of people are unemployed 435 million people stays unemployed okay and the wage real wages have declined real wages have declined now what is the real wage now guys suppose i am getting a salary of 10,000 rupees i am getting a salary of 10,000 rupees but I'll, okay every year my salary is getting increased by 5% but inflation is at the rate of 7% so though I will see that on the face my wage has increased but my real wage actually is declining because inflation is more than the increment that I am getting so real wages actually are declining because of the high inflation so this is guys all about it I hope that you have understood and uh, this is all guys about today's session with this, we come to an end to the today's session. Now, guys, we'll be meeting tomorrow. Till then, please take care of yourselves. And uh, if you have liked the video, please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe to the channel. And guys, please answer the MCQ questions because it is a kind of a revision for you. Okay. Sir, how an increased interest rate by US federal cause outflow of money from India? Now, see this thing. Suppose I'm an investor in USA. I want high return, I am coming and investing in Indian stock market. But if interest rates are high in USA, why I need to come to India? I will go back to USA. So very simple logic. Okay, fine guys. Thank you so much.